We are in the Caribbean to help establish a coral nursery in today's episode on the Dive Saga channel. Early morning boatload in Utila in the Bay Islands of Honduras because we have a big day cut out for us. The staff and interns of the Whale Shark and Oceanic Research Center are planning a full day expedition and I am able to join them and learn about corals. Some strange dive gear is being loaded onto the boat such as these heavy cinder blocks. I wonder what their role in all of this is. There is also this strange contraption made from PVC pipes. All of this is soon to transform into a project for growing coral fragments and hopefully repopulating the reef. Today we're joining the Whale Shark and Oceanic Research Center here in Utila, Honduras. The Whale Shark and Oceanic Research Center is a non-governmental organization. They're a non-for-profit and they focus on coral restoration. Time to set sail, because coral nurseries won't do much if we don't find some corals first. The goal of these coral nurseries is to basically help restore the coral cover on the reefs, right? Uh, what we're trying to do is establish these nurseries with this species so that at certain sites around Utila we can make uh, the coral cover on the reef a little bit better. The first part of our journey takes us southwest of the Utila Keys. Captain Putsi Ramon thinks that the seamounts in this location will be the perfect place for finding fragments of the coral pieces that marine biologist Megan and the team hope to find to help repopulate the local reef. So I gear up and prepare to get in the nice tropical warm water for our first dive. The objective of this dive is to find coral fragments that can serve as a starting point for reproduction in the coral nursery. But of course, the team isn't just extracting existing corals from the reef. That would be very counterproductive. Instead, they have a more eco-friendly strategy. We're uh, doing coral opportunities, so that just means that we are looking for corals that are already broken or have already separated from its colony, uh, simply because these are corals that are not attached anymore and because corals have multiple uh, types of reproduction, uh, fragmentation is one of them. So we can use these corals in our nurseries and still have really good results. So that means we are strictly looking for pieces of coral that have already broken off and aren't likely to resettle in their current spot, but are healthy enough to regrow. It sounds easier than it is. And once we find such a piece of coral, we need to make sure not to harm any other healthy organisms around it when trying to remove it. This damselfish is certainly very protective of the healthy coral that she calls her home. So back off. A little bit further, an invasive lionfish is following our activities with healthy skepticism. In a healthy coral patch, it's generally easy to find a piece or two that have been broken off by the weather. But keep in mind that we are looking for very specific species. The three that we are focusing on for our nurseries is the Acropora sylvicornis, which is known as the staghorn coral commonly. Then we're also focusing on Acropora palmata, known as the elkhorn corals, and then another Acropora species known as Acropora prolifera. Elkhorn coral can be rather large, but luckily small broken off pieces may also work for populating the nursery. 
With great care, these corals are then brought onto the boat and placed into salt water, so as not to stress them too much. This whole process is uncomfortable for the corals, and we need them to survive until we reach the nursery. Diseased or dead parts of the corals are removed, and while we make our way to their final nursing location, the fragments are then divided into smaller fragments and sorted per genotype. After all, the key to a successful coral nursery is organization of data. It's an impressive operation. The next step is to erect the nursery. So they have a whole structure that we loaded on the boat this morning that needs to be uh, put essentially next to the reef where these corals can live and grow and reach some state of maturity so that they can be ready for outplanting. This large structure will provide a safe home for the coral fragments for the next 12 months or so. This tree-like contraption is essentially a giant mobile that will be suspended in the water column. The conditions on this dive site are absolutely phenomenal today. The perfect day for a complex operation like this. The coral fragments, the trees and the cinder blocks are being brought down to the nursery location. The bottom of the structure will be at about 18 meters or 60 feet, from where it will be suspended on a rope so the height can be adjusted. The research center has several trees in this location with different genotypes of corals in different stages of development. The next step is to securely anchor the coral tree to the cinder blocks and then inflate the makeshift buoys at the top so the entire structure can come to life and stand up in the water column. Once the new trees are upright and secure and adjusted to the desired depth, the coral fragments can be given their new home for the next year or so. Remember that all the fragments were organized per genotype and so it is important to group them on specific parts of the coral tree so that proper data can be kept about which fragments are successful. Once they are secured in place, it's time for the coral fragments to get adjusted to their environment so they can start growing until they are strong enough to be outplanted and repopulate damaged parts of the reef. What a cool day and what a cool project, restoring hope to our ocean ecosystems, one step at a time. Thank you guys so much for watching and thank you to the Whale Shark and Oceanic Research Center for hosting us today. Check out the new Dive Saga website. We've got some really cool new merch as well that you can pick up, especially with the holidays around the corner. I'll be back next episode. I'll see you next time. <laughs>